Let's do this. <laughs> I say it so enthusiastically. I almost feel like I'm out of character. But do I have a character? I don't know. Oh, okay. Let's continue this serious story. The striker barely dodged, grazes my cheek and slices through the air. The pain of the initial blow which struck my back is beginning to affect my breathing. My throat constricts and I have difficulty getting air into my lungs. Only by force of will do I keep from blacking out as I look towards my assailant, who now approaches me. A young man. He wears a Yasugami high uniform. You dodged. Such a struggle, you put up. You're wasting my time. You know, they say he's got Yasugami high uniform, but I can can't really recognize it to be honest. Um, are you? I am Minazuki. Show me Nazuki. I am the one who will destroy you, the Kirijo fools, and this world. Uh, so, you're the ones who captured Mitsuru-san and... Yes, I caught them off guard, just as I did with you here. It seems you're not very perceptive. So, Mitsuru-san and her people are falling into enemy hands after all. It's hard to believe. Is this young man truly the mastermind behind all these incidents? Well, your intuition is impressive. For you to discern our plan after only one battle. It's an absurd scheme. What are you trying to summon with that tower? I gather that his plan is far more dreadful than what I had imagined at the start. That grotesque tower called Tartarus, which was brought forth to call upon something inhuman. What if the culprit in this case also intends on summoning something to this world? God, yeah. Now just thinking exactly what I'm thinking. And what if the reason that enemy makes no move to hide the fakes and challenges for legitimate fights is because they need to gather something before that plan can be achieved? These run on sentences, oh my god. Don't get me wrong. That in itself is not my objective. All I want is to grant a wish. A wish? Whose? There's no need for you to know. This isn't good. He's already close enough for his attack to reach me. I'm still suffering from his earlier strike. Minazoki's next blow will surely cost me my life. I need to buy whatever time I can now. I kidnapped Lavras and attempted to collect our personas before, but that's not the case this time. You're using Mitsuru-san and her team as hostages, and you've prepared fake versions of us to fight. Hmm. There's only one reason why you'd create such elaborate imitations of us. Even to the point of summoning personas, and have them challenge us. You set this entire scenario up so that we wouldn't think twice about fighting. That's right. Everything was set up from the start. You know, I've, I've figured out some things um, now in my brain, but I'll mention them later. It's the same rules as last time. After drumming that, <laughs> that impression into our heads, our opponents admit outright that they're fakes. As a result, I'd stop trying to figure out the motivations behind their actions. Since I'd taken hostages and walked this town, we concluded that we had no choice but to play along, and were willing to fight without further hesitation. But I suspect Mizuki must be gaining those shiny particles I saw earlier through our battles with the fakes. Again, your intuition is impressive. By forcing you to fight in this fog, I am carving off bits of your personas. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Trust me, guys, I, that's really what I thought because um, I was I mentioned several videos ago. <laughs> it's a weird to think um, in that way, but anyway, that uh, none of the other characters mentioned that they felt weaker. So it must have been that when they have a fight with a fake one, that one is caught getting energy from the persona so the more you fight the weaker you, your persona gets and therefore when you fight loads and loads then basically you've just lost so and that kind of makes sense with the dutch sound because if you've only got three you're gonna will down all your power in no time so that's probably also a reason why we have to choose uh who we want to fight um maybe i don't know if that really matters but carving off our personas I've said too much. It seems our guests of honor have arrived. Minazu Minazuki turns his gaze to the sky and narrows his eyes as if looking beyond the red fog. Simultaneously, the faint sound of a helicopter becomes evident. I enjoyed my time with you. The 
the opportunity arises again, I'd like to speak with you further. Oh, I was expecting a fight. With that, Minazuki gracefully puts distance between us. The moment there's enough space for someone to intrude between us, a shadow comes dancing down from the sky, as if waiting that exact moment. Huh. Okay, well... I don't know if I should be frustrated or be happy. Oh! Wait. Is this the real Labrys? Labrys? Don't worry now, Takun. I got you. Labrys, don't let your guard down. He's the one who attacked Surasan's group. This guy? Our guests of honor have arrived. I've been waiting for you, Shadow Operatives. Labrys stands between Minazuki and myself, as if shielding me. Seems I've been spared the way her's case scenario. The sound of the helicopter's rotor still remains in the sky above us. It appears to be slowly descending. I strongly suspect that a plume of dust is installed into that helicopter. I recall an entry in the public safety documents explaining how a plume of dust would enable machinery to continue functioning, even in supernatural space times where no other electronics would work. Yeah, that's how like um, materials of bike would work. Back in the original Pacific Rim 3. Yeah. It's unlike me to let my mind wander into matters of peril science. Perhaps it's the relief of my life to no longer be in peril. Who are you? Why are you doing all this? Who am I? Hmm? That constant question. It's quite intriguing that a machine created for suppressing shadows would ask you. What? But first, let me see the rest of you. Ooh. As Minazuki keeps his eyes on Labrys, a black liquid shadow rises from behind him, instantly ascending to the helicopter. The shadow, no persona, and it means to take down that helicopter. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. This. No! Yukari-san! Cancun! Ooh! Labrys cries out in desperation. Sony users, though they may be, they are still human. If they go down along with the helicopter they're in, they'll be grievously wounded at best. Oh yeah, it's the Yukari time. An unfamiliar woman's voice calls out from within the helicopter. All at once, a tremendous gust of wind swirls a, a, about the helicopter, repelling the black shadow's ambush at the last uh, second. Quite the persona, However, Yukari-san, he's winding up for another one. We're getting off, Koromaru. Just as the warlord dies down, an attack originating from within the helicopter speeds towards Minazuki's persona, which is primed to attack again. Amazing! What a perfectly timed maneuver! The surrounding fog lights up, and as the persona clash at each other, those grains of light that Minazuki is after disperse. At the same time, three figures jump out of the helicopter and descend towards us. The whir of the helicopter's rotors increases, which I take to mean that it's flying off somewhere so then it's objective from the start was to drop these people off here hmm so oh I like the artwork I look once again to the new two arrivals at the and the animal that have descended upon the food court ah, I know who they are after all it was only a moment ago I was at the inner station reviewing documents pertaining to them Whew, that was close but now that we're here, you don't get to do whatever you want anymore. Oh man, it's cool to see these guys again. Malto Shiragani, right? Are you all okay? We'll handle this. <laughs> Obviously, they are older than the pictures and the documents. But the woman is Yukari Takeba, the calm boy is Ken Amada, and the Snow White Shiba following closely at Ken's heels is Kurumaru-san. They were all involved in the incident which occurred when Mitsuru-san was in high school. And though they are not officially numbered members, they are persona users on the Shadow Operative Emergency Suppression Unit, the Auxiliary Staff. Auxiliary Labrys, Ports, huh? I'm trusting now Takun with you. Wow, I wasn't expecting a sprite to look like that. Oh, that's nice. Gotcha! You don't have to worry about a thing now. So you're our enemy. You won't escape now. Oh, I love that music. The three of them fan out to Minazuki's left and right, readying themselves for combat. 
Such efficient tactical movements, all while never dropping their guard. I wonder how often one must face death in order to become like them. The players have finally gathered. It's nice to meet you. I am Minazuki. Show Minazuki. Welcome to this world. I wanted to meet you all, especially Kirijo. You are the ones who killed his father, after all. Oh! Oh, it must be Shuji Akutsuki's son. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is Sho... Is Sho... Is this the shadow of Sho? And Sho is the son of Shuji Akutsuki? What's he talking about? Or is this someone else we're talking about? Who knows? I don't really care either. Or maybe the, um... That professor guy is this... This Shuji Akutsuki's gun, that, that's a possibility. I have no intention of fighting you now. I only wished to see your faces. His world? Minazuki's phrasing catches my attention. It's going to be an important clue to the culprit's motives. Could Minazuki mean that he instigated this in order to avenge someone whose parents or parents were killed? Perhaps he's seeking revenge on the shadow operatives? No, that's not right. Given that they took Mitsuru Sans group hostage and summon the others here. It seems more likely that Minazuki wants revenge on Mitsuru-san and her associates from high school. I'll be heading back now. Take your time. Hmm. Though, I guess it could be, um... The Jesus dude and uh, all those guys. Though I doubt it very much. Because they also died, so... When Mizuki raises his hand, a different voice echoes from further in. It's a voice I know only too well. Oh. What the? What's going on? Another now tokun? Don't be deceived. That's an imitation of me. An imitation? Huh? That sounds like the kind of dirty trick they pull. Huh? It seems I'll be facing those who are participating in Grand Prix for the first time. I hate to waste time. So let's begin. Bring on the rays! My doppelganger raises one hand to the sky. It means to summon the red pillars that form the arena. I'm still too badly injured to dodge this, but I can't allow us all to be trapped here. Everyone, get away from me! Hurry! <gasps> Yukari-san, Koromaru, spread out! Yukari, Ken, and Koromaru-san jump back in response to my warning shot. Laris, on the other hand, maintains a position shielding me, making a no attempt at all to move. Ah, I see now. yukari san told Laris that I'm trusting Naoto-kun with you, and Laris would never abandon her duties. yukari san and Ken-kun understand that as well, and so Laris was not mentioned, and ken gave the orders to spread out. A very efficient teamwork. I feel that I understand the secret behind the Shadow Operative's strength somewhat. Huh. Four red pillars that fall from the sky embed themselves firmly into the food court's floor and release a dull light. Thank goodness Yukari-san and the others seem to have escaped the pillars' field of influence. What's going on? Wait, what the? Where's the culprit? What? Wait, when did he? Now that they mention it, I too realize for the first time that Minazuki is nowhere to be seen. Minazuki's presence is completely gone. It vanished from the arena just as suddenly as it appeared behind me. That's because he teleports! As a cheater. <laughs> like I said, I'll be your opponent. Don't worry. A version of myself is close to death. And the machines just joined the shadow operators. It would be pretty sorry for her. So just this once, while no attacks are still allowed from outside, I'll agree to fight whoever enters the arena. Hmm. As 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 the Dachi said, and that these characters wouldn't know, but they should probably not be doing as the fake Naruto says they should be doing, because they haven't actually none of the characters have checked to see if they can actually go beyond the walls, have they? But not properly anyway. Invisible walls. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Oh, okay. Someone has. Okay. Yukari-san tries to take a step forward and hits her head badly on the invisible wall. 
Uh, perhaps I gave them too much credit before. It's possible that these shadow operatives are in fact surprisingly careless. That's a bit harsh.